Okay, in this case we've got a few examples and hopefully this video is not very long-winded. We'll try to speed it up. Complex zeros of polynomial functions. So this is very similar maybe to what we've done with quadratics. Just now we need to think about complex numbers. Okay, so in this case we're going to apply the square root property to get rid of the square. So in doing so, we end up with something that looks like this, x plus 1 equal, and then it's plus and minus the square root of this negative 2. And so now we want to isolate the x, and we're going to subtract 1. So I subtract 1 there, and that cancels. Now here, understand that this is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 2. And the square root of negative 1 is represented by the variable, or not the variable, but by this letter i, the imaginary unit. So the answer here uh, is that x equals negative 1 plus and minus i, and then square root of 2, because the square root of 2 is irrational. You can't take the square root of it. So this right here is what that square root would look like. Okay, so that's the first answer for this first problem. Now this one right here is actually really nice and it's something that I really like because I call this a difference of two squares or dots. So there's other videos uh, where that you can look up about difference of two square, squares but this is a, a very interesting uh, combination here because it's to the power of four and you can definitely certainly take the square root and that's actually what we're going to do. So think about what the square root of x to the fourth is and that's x squared and think about the square root of 81, and that is 9. So you're going to have, you know, x squared minus 9 and x squared plus 9. Well, this right here also happens to be a difference of two squares. So namely, x plus 3 and x minus 3, if you follow that same principle. Take the square root, take the square root, and plus and minus. Well, this part right here is not a difference of two squares. It's maybe a sum of two squares. Uh, but uh, what we're going to do, since this all equals zero, is we've already got these right here, these factors. So now we're going to uh, take this right here, the x squared plus 9, and we're going to say, okay, well, x squared plus 9 equals zero. So subtract 9 from both sides. x squared equal negative 9 and then we're going to take the square root. And so in this case, x will equal plus and minus the square root of nine is three, and the square root of this negative unit here is i. And by the zero factor property, the same thing holds here, x equal negative three, and here x equal positive three. So when we're asked for the zeros of this fourth degree uh, polynomial, we can say, well, x equals negative 3, it equals positive 3, it equals negative 3i, and it equals positive 3i. So those are the four zeros. We have two real zeros and two imaginary or two complex, uh, well, let's just call them imaginary for now, two imaginary solutions uh, for this right here, for this uh, function. Okay? Now, Let's move on to this next one. Okay, so this right here should look very familiar. It's a quadratic, and typically in quadratics, we want them equal to zero. So I'm going to get this 16 and move it to this side right here, and that cancels. And that leaves me with x squared minus 10x plus 41 equals zero. So I want to see if I can factor it first. I want the factors of 41 that add to give me negative 10. Well, 41 is a prime number, so it has no such factors other than 1 or 41, so no combination will be able to factor this. So when worst comes to worst, we always uh, use the quadratic formula, a equal 1, b equal negative 10, and c equal 41. So let's go ahead and perform that uh, operation there. All right. So opposite b, opposite b, we get uh, the opposite of negative 10, which is positive 10, plus and minus the square root of b squared, so negative 10 squared minus 4 times 1 times 41, all over 2a, which is 2 times 1. So in this case, we get 10 
plus and minus the square root of 100 minus, and 4 by 41 is 164, all divided by 2. And when we clean up, we get 10 plus and minus square root of negative 64 divided by 2, and we get 10 plus and minus, now the square root of negative 64, square root of 64 there is 8, right? So 8i in this case, all divided by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So, well, let's actually write it out separate. 10 over 2 plus and minus 8 over 2i. And now we can simplify it. 10 over 2 is 5 plus and minus and 8 over 2 is 4i. So here it is 5 plus and minus 4i, a solution uh, to this uh, quadratic. And uh, solutions are both complex.